Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Um, yes, this is my man cave. Uh, I'm off to the US in about half an hour's time, so I've really got um, 10 minutes to make this video. Okay, so last time I left it on um, hair loss and what to do with uh, female pattern hair loss because I do believe that this is a very important topic and it's a topic which cannot be combined with male pattern baldness or male pattern hair loss. So let's get into it. Hair loss, it happens to just about everyone. And in females, uh, there are specifics, and I'll go through the very specifics as to um, what can be done, what's the main cause, and how to treat it. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is diagnosis. So there are many causes of hair loss. Like I said to you in the beginning, uh, hair loss can be caused by a whole heap of disorders, including uh, androgenetic alopecia, in other words, um, uh, this hereditary baldness, it can be caused secondary to telogen effluvium, which is the second most common cause in females. So for all you females who've had a baby, you know you've got a lot of hair during the pregnancy, but three to four months later, it all falls out and you panic because you've got handfuls of hair, you're grabbing it from the sink and you're going bald. And that's normal because what happens is that um, during pregnancy with all your hormones you hold back your hair the hairs in what's known as the anagen phase Yeah, and then it goes into the telogen phase, which is the sleeping phase which lasts three to four months After you give birth the telogen phase kicks in and then three to four months later it sheds and it sheds a lot Yeah, the good news however in this situation um, you get your hair back, so, yeah, so you don't have to worry about um, uh, hair transplants or taking tablets Yes, it's slow, it can take anywhere up to eight to nine months, but most of your hair comes back within that time. So telogen effluvium can also be caused due, due to things like trauma, blood loss, shock, stress, a whole heap of things which will put a major stress upon your body. And that shuts down your hair just for that uh, time period, lets it rest, and then lets it all go in three to four months time. So don't go to those clinics and they get the diagnosis wrong because it's quite easy to diagnose. Um, a good dermatologist would just do what's known as a hair pull test. Uh, they look through a dermatoscope and they can see telogen hairs instead of anagen hairs or broken hairs. So the majority of times, um, it's a very easy, simple diagnosis. Go to a dermatologist, go to a hair expert, and in most situations, you will not get ripped off because they'll say, look, just chill out maybe use a bit of minoxidil um, and they'll run a couple of blood tests and everything should be right. Now, let's go into the other causes of hair loss. So we've got to exclude all the other rare causes, lichenoid causes, inflammatory causes, lichen planar pilaris, alopecia areata, um, drug-induced causes, so many other causes, endocrine causes. So your doctor or specialist will run a set of tests. And usually for a hair loss test, they check your endocrine status, you know, your cortisol levels, most importantly, your thyroid levels, and your vitamin levels, and um, iron levels. And this is why it's more common in women for iron deficiency, because of the fact that uh, with your menstrual cycle, you may have heavy menstrual loss and hence have less iron. Less iron, less folate, less, vitamin, less vitamin B12, and you may be deficient in that. So that's why it's very important to get some tests because once you go back on the iron supplements or the folate or the B12 or zinc or what have you, um, your hair grows back. So you, see, so you don't need to go have expensive treatments if you don't need to. So please take it as a medical condition and not, I've got hair loss, geez, what can I do? Um, shall I buy myself a laser lead device for my hair? No, you don't. You get the diagnosis first and you work from there. Now, Let's talk about female pattern hair loss because it's very different from male pattern hair loss. Male pattern hair loss, we call it um, androgenic alopecia and we grade it, right? Um, we grade it using a different scale, using what's known as a Norwood scale. So if you see males, we have different types of um, hair loss. We have vertex hair loss, bitemporal recession, um, you know, so it's called a Norwood scale. Female hair loss is more diffuse. So in other words, instead of actually Focal areas here, it's more diffuse, so it affects um, your occip occipital area, um, but it's more diffuse, it goes to the vertex area and goes to the front. So, the first thing an expert should do is just do an examination. An examination includes a hair part, so what, we actually part your hair and we measure the diameter as to see what's normal and what's abnormal. So, remember. 
Um, if you can bring some hair samples, they'll be better as well because you lose anywhere between 100 to 200 hairs per day, that's normal. If you bring some hair samples, that's great. Never ever shampoo your hair or wash your hair before seeing a dermatologist because when we do the hair pull test, that could be negative because of the fact that you've washed all your hair out. So if you can, um, bring some hair samples. If you can't, uh, do not do a shampoo or wash before you see someone because they'll actually do the hair pull test. We'll look under the microscope and we'll figure out what kind of hair loss you have. Now, like I said, if you exclude telogen and effluvium, if you've done the blood test and the blood test is normal, you exclude all the other rare causes, possibly by doing a biopsy, now you're left with what's known as androgenic alopecia, in other words, female pattern baldness. What can we do for that? Well, you, look, the, the good thing is that in the majority of cases, um, unlike males, you, you don't see females usually at the age of you know, um, 20 or so uh, getting recession. Uh, it usually takes longer than that, you know, when you're in your, in your 40s, in your 50s even. But still, at that age, you can do a lot. Um, the uh, most common cause, if you're 20 or so, is to go on and off the pill because the pill actually holds you back your hair, so it holds back the antigen, stop your pill, it goes back to telogen, and then it loses your hair, go back on your hair, uh, go back on the pill, and then stop the pill, and then it loses more. So you're going back and forth, yeah, guys? So um, that's a very common cause in your 20s. So that's part of, um, part of the hair cycle. So I'm getting a little bit sidetracked. So we're talking about um, how to treat um, hormone-based or female pattern baldness. So one of the things we use is spironolactone, an oldie by the goodie. So spironolactone is an um, anti-androgen, so that decreases DHT levels uh, within the hair follicle. That's excellent. So spironolactone is one. You, you've got to monitor potassium levels with that. The second thing you can do is be on the pill. So different kinds of pills, uh, Diane, Yaz, Yasmin, they contain things like cyprotone acetate. So you can use a higher strength cyprotone acetate and most dermatologists would cycle that, so three weeks on, one week off. Uh, you can use um, drospirinone as well, okay? Um, now, other methods to treat female pattern hair loss include uh, minoxidil. So minoxidil can be used topically, so you can put it on 5%. Don't go for the 2%, go for the 5%. Or it can be taken orally. So I take mine orally, um, and that's a 2 milligram tablet once at night. And sure, vitamins, supplements, um, all that sort of stuff can help if you're supplement deficient. The light's coming in, guys, you can see, so I'm just ducking in this way. Um, so, uh, look, if you, can take, if you want to take vitamins, make sure you're deficient in the first place before actually going on the vitamins. Now, what else can help? So, we talked about last time using PRP. Can PRP help? Yes, it can. But PRP has to be combined with medical management. And PRP should be used three in a row. So the first injection after that, six weeks later, followed by the second, and then six weeks to eight weeks later, followed by the third. Maintain that by two injections every year for life. So it's not a one-off. Don't get scammed. It's a different pattern compared to male pattern baldness. You've got a Ludwig scale of baldness, right? So you cannot use the same placement as what you do in males. So that's why you've got to see an expert. You can't just go, ooh, let's the hair clinic. Um, let's go get some PRP. Don't waste your money. Put it in the right direction. Understand um, a female pattern baldness. A check, monitor, do everything. Do your blood test. That is the gold standard. Now, when we talk about um, other devices, low level emission laser devices, can it work? Yes, it can. But once again, the papers there are loose. It's adjunctive treatment, so it's not the sole treatment. You don't buy a hat with an LED device, and next thing you know, you spread out hair. It doesn't work that way. It stimulates blood vessels, yeah? It stimulates blood vessels, blood flow, um, and that's how it actually uh, improves your hair by increasing the antigen cycle of your hair. In other words, holds the roots down a little bit more. It's much like um, fertilizer, yeah? Um, it holds down your hair a lot better. So combining different treatments like, like minoxidil, low-level emission laser devices, platelet-rich plasma, they're all adjunctive treatments to medical treatments, okay? Um, and finally, I'm gonna go to hair transplantation. So hair transplantation, once again, guys, one's very different from a male uh, because you've got diffuse hair loss. So it's not hair loss involving um, a specific area. So I'm just gonna...
So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this little thing, I'm going to walk around, and I think it's a lot better um, with the light behind me. Um, and yes, you can see my uh, man cave over here. But anyway, so we're talking about hair transplantations in females, yeah? So it's very different compared to males because males have got um, uh, the follicular units. Remember the transplant sites used to be over here. In females, because it's more diffuse hair loss, you've really got to see an expert because the last thing you want to do is take hair from an area where you're going to lose hair anyway. So in other words, you're going to take hair from back there in the Ludwig scale and next thing you're going to transfer hair back to the vertex area and within the next one or two years you lose hair from there to there. So you've really got to see an expert because they have an idea where to take the donor site from, okay? Because you're donating hairs which are less sensitive to DHT or dihydrotestosterone, yeah? Um, that is very important. Uh, that's the main difference because for males, usually you can get your hair from a little bit higher um, and towards the sides. For females with a Ludwig pattern, you certainly get hair loss that's more diffuse. So does hair transplantation work? Yes, it does. But once again, it's adjunctive. Most hair transplant surgeons would say, look, um, you need to be on medical treatment as well. It's not the only solution. So guys, I hope you liked that short segment. I am off to the US. I'm gonna love it there. I love going to the US. I haven't been there in about a year and a bit. I normally lecture around November in Las Vegas. Uh, this time I'll be going to California uh, and I'll be absolutely loving it. So doing half work and three days break. Um, it's never ending for me, guys. Um, and I'll see you same place, same, same time next week. Please subscribe. It would really help. We're doing well over 200,000 subscribers and it's growing. So thanks for your support, guys. I'll catch you next week. For all of you with a green thumb, this is what I've been creating over the last few months. Planted. This is called Dichondria. So it's a different species compared to the normal grass. And then I actually extend that and I use different types of grasses in different areas so you get this kind, kind of cool look with your house um, and once again a bit of dichondria patch just over there uh, and let's have a look I think there's some other cool patches so I did most of this garden myself so I planted all of this it's uh, I'm super 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 proud of my rooftop garden out there so if you guys haven't seen it I'll show that to you shortly because um, it's, it's just super cool um, there are other little cool things. I'm just trying to find it in the garden because there's so many different aspects of this garden you can see. Um, I love the grasses because when they grow, remember I just shifted in here two months ago. So I've been, um, that's why I've been doing so many YouTube videos is because I've been actually um, busy gardening. Some other cool stuff, where are they? Um, oh, there they are. So these are different plants once again you can see. Check it out. Yeah. So when everything develops, it's going to be really cool. And it's only for people for an eye for detail. Um, and then this, this is my, it took me ages to establish, but this is, I like it as well. It's, it's, um, it's my, it's my terrace garden coming up. Uh, and you can see some lavender over there. And as we go up, uh, remember I did all this myself, <laughs> the rock arrangements, uh, and the plantation over here, which I think I'm pretty proud of as well, once it actually starts to grow. Uh, but I'll show you the rooftop garden, so hang tight and I'll go up to the rooftop garden. So down here, oh shit, I better not fall, um, is my fern garden, which I planted for my daughter Elizabeth Jane. So that's her special, special fairy magic garden with a special entrance over there. Um, but they're all ferns and they're establishing really nicely. I've had, to, I've got to establish before the, uh, before the summer. So that's why I've been planting and planting. Uh, and, um, and this is my creation. So as for many years, I've wanted a rooftop garden and, um, now I've got it guys. So check this out. That's my rooftop garden. It's overwhelmed with the uh, sedums over here, and sedums grow really easily. It's actually a pathway or footway around here, and I kind of like it because you see this cascade, how it cascades down to the, to the, um, to the edge of the carport. Um, I reckon it's cool. So these sedums just grow really rapidly. So I'm just pulling them out. You can see I've got actually a walkway around here. Um, and what I'm trying to do, 
is to grow 76 species of plants, so 76 different species, including grasses, um, thyme, se uh, sedums, um, dichondra is going really well over there. And once it's established, it's really great. Um, it's a lot of a lot of colour, but I don't want too much colour in this garden because otherwise, it's just your eye just gets all over the place. So um, I think it's a nice it's a nice mix. That's the geeky me, right in. Uh, in Mother Nature. Um, I think it translates back to work as well because if you've got a good eye for things and an eye for beauty, whether it be nature, whether it be proportions, and you're actually, uh, I guess, treating a patient, um, that eye translates to what, what's, I guess, what beauty is. Uh, and, you know, to me, I, I, I don't, it's not I'm an Asian and I'm a tight ass and don't, and want, to, don't want a gardener. I actually enjoy the creation of things because that's that's yeah that's from the heart guys and um, and when you look back at your garden when it when it grows um, you just go hey man I, 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 I did that uh, and like I said it's every, everything I do really has a translation to work um, whether you have an eye for things a patience for things an understanding for things so guys, I didn't realize how long this video went. Um, it went on for another 15 minutes because I was waiting for my Uber. But anyway, that's a little glimpse of my life um, and I hope you guys like it. Um, and I'll catch you some other time. Um, bye for now.